All right, so Adam is having trouble with his... Uh, let me take that drink first. <laughs> Sponsor, Red Bull. Does it give you wings? It does. <laughs> hey, Brian Miller here, author, speaker, magician, podcast host, and audio nerd. And welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up. And in this video, we're doing a review of the Audio-Technica AT875R Line and Gradient Shotgun Microphone. Woo! I made it through that in one shot. Hot diggity. <laughs> Hot diggity. What the heck was I talking about? As I said, we're talking about the AT875R, which is a line and gradient shotgun microphone, which is what you're hearing right now. In fact, you'll be hearing it this entire video, unless otherwise noted, down here in the left-hand corner of the screen. Right now, it's sitting just out of frame. My hand is now at it. It's right here, just out of frame, uh, on a boom pole coming over and pointed directly at my mouth. So you might be wondering, what is a shotgun microphone? What is it for? Well, shotgun microphones are designed for this. They're designed to capture high quality, crystal clear audio, but at a distance. In other words, you wanna use a shotgun mic when you're doing a video shoot where you don't want any visible microphones. Now within shotgun microphones, there's a bunch of different types. These are shotgun microphones. They're designed to go on your camera, typically on a consumer level camera. And there's a few differences between this type of a microphone and the one I'm using right now, a line and gradient. These on-camera shotgun mics typically have a cardioid polar pattern, which means they pick up directly from the front and also a bit to the sides. Now that can be a pro or a con because it means it's pretty forgiving. If it's pointed and not exactly at your mouth, if it's a little bit off to the left or to the right or top or bottom, uh, a cardioid pattern will still pick up what's in front of it loud and clear. The downside, of course, is that it's not very specific. It'll pick stuff up to the left or right, even if it's pointed directly at your mouth. So uh, cardioid microphones have a habit of picking up unwanted sounds, background noise, etc. Meanwhile, the Audio-Technica AT875R has a line and gradient polar pattern, which is highly focused. It only picks up directly in front of the microphone and almost completely rejects everything to the sides, which has pros and cons. It is a much tighter, much more focused sound, but if you're even a little left or a little right of it or a little up or a little down, it's gonna change the perceived volume, it's gonna change the tone dramatically. So just to give you an idea, if I keep talking at the same way, way over here, if I keep talking at the same way, way over here, if I move in front of the microphone where my voice is in front of it now, or if I turn to point at something over here, you hear that the sound almost completely disappears until I come back right where it's sat directly at my voice. So yes, it's a tighter, more detailed, more specific sound. It rejects a lot more of the background noise, but it's also much more sensitive. And so it's still going to pick up the echo in a room like this. And you're going to lose the tone completely, lose the power of a voice completely if your subject is veering too far one way or another. You can see I'm pretty static in this video. I'm pretty stationary because I've got this thing sitting directly over my head pointed right at my mouth. The other major difference is that most of the on-camera shotgun mics you're used to have a 3.5 millimeter connection that goes right into your consumer level camera, whereas the AT875R and similar line and gradient shotgun mics have a professional XLR connection. They require an XLR cable and that means that your camera would need to have an XLR input, which usually doesn't exist until you get into the high-end prosumer, <laughs> what did I just say? The high-end prosumer or professional grade cameras. You would need something like I'm using right here, a portable audio recorder, with XLR inputs. This is the Zoom H5. And of course, you could also, in a studio setup, use a digital audio interface like the one I've got sitting back here. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the AT875R. It sounds pretty good uh, for a cheap microphone. This is an entry-level 
prosumer grade microphone. You're not gonna find this on professional sets for the most part, but it's pretty professional for most home users, studio users, if you're a YouTuber or producing content for the internet, uh, you could do a lot worse than this for only 160, 170 bucks. Now, I know that that's, you know, that's not a, a, a that's not spare change for most people. I know that that to you may be a huge amount of money, but in the world of microphones like this, 160, $170 is really pretty low. I just realized I don't need this on the table anymore. So let's talk about what you get for that. Well, in the box, of course, you get the microphone itself which is very, very small. Most line and gradient shotgun mics are very, very long. Please don't make this a meme. Most professional shotgun mics or line and gradient mics are very long. This one is obviously very, very short. It's also extremely light and it comes with a foam windscreen, which is uh, pretty good, good for indoor use. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go without a furry wind muff, uh, a dead cat for outdoor use, which this does not come with. Uh, but it does come with a very, very nice leather padded case, zipper, and of course it also comes with the microphone stand clip designed for this specific microphone. So that's all it comes with, but the question is really, you know, how does it sound? Well, you've been listening to it. I am in a studio in my house. This is not a professional studio, at least not yet. Those of you who follow my channel, either my main channel, uh, which you can link to right here, or this new audio for content creators channel, you know that I moved, uh, my wife and I bought a new house about mm, six, eight months ago now. And this is one of our spare bedrooms. Now this is a pretty good sized room. It's a 13 by 14 room, which for a spare bedroom to turn into a home studio, like it's awesome. I have a couch sitting back here and a million guitars in this corner. I've got a piano over here and I've got all my studio stuff behind me in a closet, another closet. At the moment, like I can hear it in the room right now, even without headphones on and my monitoring the audio, it's kind of hollow and echoey. And a line and gradient microphone picks up a lot of stuff, like it picks up everything. So if you have headphones on right now, you can probably hear the echo and the slightly hollow sound in the room. It's as close as I can get it, but even given that, it's a little echoey, it's got some noise in here. Contrast that with having a dynamic microphone right up close to you, like this Shure SM58. This is the same microphone I use to do all of my voiceover work for my podcast, my intros and outros, and most of the actual interviews themselves uh, from my end when it's remote. And as you can hear, this is a tremendously better sound. It's fuller, it's richer, it has way less background noise, way less of that room hollowness and the echo. For example, now we're back to the Audio-Technica AT875R and you can hear a lot more noise in the room, a lot of that hollowness, a lot of that reverb, a lot of that echo. But if we switch back to the Shure SM58, you don't hear hardly any of that noise at all, which is really terrific. Now I wanted to give you a chance to hear this microphone in a completely different setup and being used for a completely different reason. I was recently in Buffalo, New York to do a live event and while I was in town, All right, so Adam's been having trouble with his audio for his YouTube channel primarily, right? Why don't you tell yeah, us what you're just from, with? mostly for my live streams. Because yeah. whenever I'm making a nice tutorial, I have a nice uh, camera setup for that. But when I'm live streaming, I just I just been using the mic from my webcam. I do very unusual things on this channel. There's building puppets because that's one of those things. That's one of those uh, um, s skills or interests that encompass a lot of other uh, uh, traits. So there's a lot of sewing. There's a lot of sculpting. There's a lot of painting. Uh, pretty much any medium of art you can think of, even performing art, is involved in the puppetry. So I'm always using all these unusual tools, getting weird noises, and 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 again, I have to have air filters on because of the fumes and yeah. stuff. And it's just a lot of ambient noise. I'm trying to limit that best I can. Yeah, and so we've been talking for a while because Adam's trying to figure out like what's the right microphone setup that can capture him during a live stream. Best option would really be to just have a, a lav mic. Now you could probably run a tethered lav mic down under the table and over there, but the concern is that you're just gonna get wrapped up in it while you got tools. You might just cut it accidentally instead of something else. And what well, we considered wireless, like you were yeah. thinking originally you had the idea of wireless lav mics. Yeah, but sometimes I'm building for six hours or something and, and, and sometimes daily. If I'm doing a project and I have to finish it in a week, 
I may do 40 hours of building in that week, and I can't be changing my batteries out like or, four, four, six times or, or whatever. Or recharging every three hours exactly. and taking a break or yeah. whatever. So you'd have to have multiple ones all charged and ready to go. It'd be crazy. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to look at this and do a couple of tests to see if this will work sitting out of frame and be prominent enough without picking up too much of the background noise. Like even right now, I can hear the... Uh, uh, the air conditioning. air conditioning and the window, does that usually on when you're... Yes. Okay, so that's on. So there's there's background noise that's not a big deal in person. Sometimes Fred is making little noises, Sometimes too. Sometimes Fred is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we've got here is the boom pole going up to the microphone right here where Adam is gonna be sitting doing all of his work. That this microphone will be able to pick him up even though it's, well, it's only about 18 inches above the uh, head. So uh, as soon as he gets back from changing Fred, we are going to uh, turn it on and monitor and uh, do a little uh, test recording and see how it comes out. All right, a few things just changed. Uh, I was able to put the headphones on and monitor the audio coming out of uh, here. And one of the things that we just did is we moved it to the other side. So it was, it was set up right here facing this way. And we just moved it from here to the other side away from the, uh, the AC unit in the wall here. Right now, this probably sounds loud to you because I'm facing it, but if I turn away from it, you'll hear the AC unit a lot less because it's behind the microphone instead of in front of it. So we changed the position of it to help uh, isolate Adam's voice. And now we're finally having a chance to test it. You ready to do, uh, how's she doing? She's doing good. All right, guys, we're live uh, with a really quick video because uh, Fred is getting a little anxious. But what I want to show you guys, I know I showed this a couple uh, couple weeks ago, is this, it's called an Easy Point and Turner. But I just had a whole bunch of people asking me about it because I featured it in my Figment build, if you saw that. This is what I use to turn the fingers inside and out. Now, if you look at my old tutorials, specifically when I was using this pattern, I just used a pencil to turn it inside out. You can hear you loud and clear. That thing's nowhere close to you, and it's loud and clear. It's also so detailed that it could hear Fred the entire time like a gremlin, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? And as you can see, it worked out really, really well. Adam, it turns out, ordered um, uh, this mic for himself the very next day. He's been using it ever since, and he's thrilled. All right, a few final notes and a few final thoughts on the AT875R. Uh, one of the only things I really don't like about it is that it has a 90 hertz uh, bass roll off. It rolls all the audio off at about 90 hertz. Now, those of you who have followed my audio tutorials and reviews for a long time, those of you who have purchased and are in my uh, Audio 101 for Content Creators course, uh, will know that the power of a male voice typically sits around 80 to 100 hertz. So the fact that this microphone cuts off everything underneath 90 hertz means you do lose a little bit of the power of a voice like mine, which is kind of deep, uh, which is unfortunate. Now, I think the average person buying this mic probably would be very happy with this because it saves you a step in post-production of having to do a complete low cut and listening for that. It also saves you having to cut out some of the low end rumble, wind noise, road noise, all that stuff because it's kind of already been done for you. The way I feel about this mic is it's relatively in inexpensive, it's super light, it's really portable, um, it's got a great tone to it, but overall, I would consider this mic good. It's good, and it, it's always gonna be good, but I don't think it's ever going to be exceptional. It's the same way I feel about the Rode Video Micro, which is so popular for vloggers on YouTube. That thing has a 100 hertz roll off, so it captures none of the low frequencies. It's got a kind of a bright nasally feel, but that is exactly the sound you need to cut through all the background noise, and so most vloggers plug it right in and they do no post-production. That thing sounds good right out of the box, but it's almost impossible to make that mic sound exceptional. And I feel the same way about this. If you're looking for an entry level um, line and gradient mic to do talking head shots, to do uh, grab two of them to do interviews, and you have access to a portable audio recorder or a digital audio interface where you can 
take an XLR input that has phantom power, then yeah, I mean, this thing's, this thing's awesome. Uh, and for someone like Adam using it for live streams, really, really beneficial. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was beneficial. Thanks so much for sticking with me. My name is Brian Miller, and I really hope that you get to sound better and level up. We'll see you next time.